so we are discussing with the unfired pressure vessel so here are some pressure subjected to the unfired pressure vessels are as follows so first pressure is a pmw that is a working pressure so it is the maximum pressure to which unfired pressure vessel is subjected in operation second is the design pressure it is generated by pi the pre, uh, the pressure vessel at which uh, the pressure at which pressure vessel is designed is called as a design pressure so the design pressure is always equal to the 1.05 times the working pressure so this is the standard equation pi is equal to 1.05 into pmw that is nothing but design pressure is the 1.5 times working pressure to calculate the shell thickness nozzle and opening calculations this design pressure is considered the next is a <coughs> hydrostatic test pressure at which the unfired pressure vessel is tested before put into the operation so this uh, uh, pressure is called as a hydrostatic test pressure it is generated by pht and given as 1.3 times internal pressure or design pressure so the hydrostatic test pressure is always equal to the 1.3 times design pressure then allowable stress should be uh, equal to the uh, tangential or hook stress or circumferential stress as per asme or is code sigma allowable that is allowable stress is equal to sut it is ultimate tensile stress by 3 and according to din code sigma allowable is always equal to the syt that is a yield tensile strength by 1.5 next term is a corrosion allowance uh, the additional thickness provided to the shell to take into account the corrosion of the plate of pressure vessel by chemical attack or rusting so whenever there is a chemical attack or rusting is there in the pressure vessel material so the additional thickness is considered that is called as a corrosion allowance and it is denoted by the c so for which material c is not required and for which material c is required that is corrosion allowance is required that we will see so here if material is a high alloy steel and non ferrous means there will be no carbon or very less amount of carbon then there will be no consideration of the corrosion allowance if the material is cast iron or carbon steel that is nothing but there will be a more percentage of carbon in the material so the corrosion allowance will be considered for the cast iron and carbon steel as a 1.5 mm and whenever the it serves the corrosion conditions if thickness is greater than 30 mm uh, there will be no need to consider the corrosion allowance and uh, if the more corrosion is there conditions are there then the corrosion allowance will be considered as a 3 mm so if the thickness is of the pressure vessel is greater than 30 mm then for any material there will be no need to consider the corrosion allowance but if a material is suffered from the corrosion conditions or with the more percentage of carbon then there will be the use of the corrosion allowance uh, like 1.5 mm or 3 mm next one is a shell thickness design so the standard formula for shell thickness design will be t is equal to pi di upon 2 times sigma allowable yl minus pi where sigma allowable is the allowable stress so calculated by using the pi d for two times yl or it is also eta l efficiency so d will be calculated by using the formula di plus t that is nothing but a inner diameter to thickness addition of the inner diameter and thickness that will be the d then ts will be equal to t plus c next is the stresses in the vessel so first stress in uh, unfired pressure vessel is the circumferential stress so this is occurs due to the internal pressure pi 
So circumferential stress is denoted by sigma t. So the sigma t is equal to pi di by 2t. So the d is the inner diameter. So di plus t is the diameter with the uh, thickness pi di by 2t, where t is equal to ts plus ts minus corrosion allowance. So shell thickness minus corrosion allowance will be the t value. So from this way, we can calculate the circumferential stress, the stress along the circumference. So here t, this t is called as a circumferential stress and this due to this force exerted on the length of the shell. Next one is a longitudinal direction, the stress induced is the sigma L. So that will be the sigma L1 plus sigma L2 plus sigma L3. So due to the uh, internal pressure PI, sigma L1 will be there. That will be the PI di upon 4 times T. Then uh, due to the weight of the vessel con contained in vertical direction, so the sigma L2 will be the W by pi dt. So that will be the W by pi di plus t into t. Then third type of longitudinal stress is due to the bending. That is the sigma L3 is equal to positive m by z, where z is calculated by using the formula pi into di plus t bracket square into t by 4. So this will represent the uh, longitudinal stress due to the pi pressure. Then this is the due to the weight of the vertical content inside the vessel. So from this uh, uh, second stress is calculated. And third one is the due to the bending moment or bending, the stress is calculated called as a longitudinal stress. Next one is a pipeline or third sigma s yes, that is a radial stress. So that will be equal to 2t upon pi d ti plus t square into t. So this is the pipeline stress. So the equivalent stress, equivalent result of stress sigma r will be equal to square root of sigma t square plus sigma l square minus sigma t sigma l plus three times sigma s square. So in this way, we can calculate the equivalence resultant stress. Now we will see one problem on a pressure vessel. So the following data refers to the vertical pressure vessel. The ultimate tensile strength is a 425 Newton per mm square. Field strength is a 250 Newton per mm square. Gauge pressure is a one megapascal. Inner diameter of the vessel shape is two meter. Height of the vessel is a six meter. Thickness of the vessel shell is a 10 mm. Uh, weight of the each end cover is four kilonewton. Weight of the content in the vessel is 125 kilonewton. Wind pressure on the vessel surface is 1.25 kilonewton per meter square. Torque due to the offset piping on the vessel shell is 1.5 kilonewton meter. So determine the maximum resultant stress in the vessel shell. The factor of safety variable available and comment about the safety of the design. So the given data SUT is 425 Newton per mm square. Power is the one Newton per mm square. Height is the 6,000 mm. W is four into 10 raised to three Newton. SYT is a 250 mm square. DI is 2,000 mm. T is 10 mm. WC is 1.25 into 10 raised to three Newton. Therefore torque is a 1.5 into 10 raised to six Newton mm. Therefore, P is equal to 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 Newton per mm square. So this is the design pressure. Then internal pressure is Pi is the always uh, 1.5 times working pressure. So here working pressure is 1 Pw. Therefore, 1.05 into 1 is a 1.05 Newton per mm square. So here PI will be equal to PW in this case. So first stress is a circumferential direction. Sigma T is equal to PI DI plus T upon 2T. So 1.05 into 2000 plus T 
that is a 10 upon 2 into 10. So the circumference stress is equal to 105.525 Newton per mm square 10 side. Next, traces in longitudinal direction. So in longitudinal direction due to the internal pressure Pi. So sigma L1 will be Pi di by 4 times t. So the sigma L1 is equal to 52.5 Newton per mm square 10 side. Then stress in longitudinal direction due to the weight of the vessel and its content. So sigma L2 will be equal to W by pi di plus t into t. Therefore, W is equal to weight of the content in the vessel plus weight of the lower cover. So that will be equal to WC plus WH. So W is equal to 129 into 10 raised to 3 Newton. So sigma L2 putting the value of W, then di and t. We'll get a stress in longitudinal direction due to the weight of the vessel and its content equal to 2.043 Newton per mm square 10 side. Next, bending stress due to the wind load, uh, sigma L3. So wind force acting is a FW. So that FW will be equal to pH D0 or DO. So that will be P into height into DI plus 2T. So the wind force is equal to 15,150 Newton. Maximum bending moment F is equal to FW into H by 2. So the maximum bending moment will be 4545 into 10 raised to 4 Newton mm. Therefore, bending stress sigma L3 is equal to plus minus M by Z. So that will be plus minus 4M upon 5 Di plus T square into T. So bending stress will be equal to plus minus 1.432 Newton per mm square. So the bending stress will be tensile as well as a compressive. Then a resultant stress sigma L will be equal to sigma L1 plus sigma L2 plus sigma L3. So the, uh, the resultant stress will be sigma L is equal to 55.975 Newton per mm square in tensile. The shear stress due to the offset piping tau is equal to T upon J upon R max. So the shear stress due to the offset piping is a 0.024. Newton per mm square. Then a resultant stress in the vessel sigma r is by distortion energy theory. Sigma r is equal to square root of sigma t square minus sigma t into sigma l plus sigma l square plus three times shear stress due to the opposite piping. So the sigma r will be equal to 91.44 Newton per mm square. So in this way, we, we get the resultant stress 91.44 Newton per mm square. Circumference stress so 105.525 Newton per mm square. Longitudinal stress you will get 55.575 Newton per mm square. Then NFY is equal to SYT upon sigma t. Therefore, uh, we will get the 2.37 as the factor of safety, which is greater than 1.5. So, design is our set. Then, second one is the NFU is equal to SYT upon sigma t. So that will be 425 upon 105. So 4.03 is greater than 3. So design is safe. So in this way, we can solve the problems on unfired pressure vessel for the given boundary condition of the internal pressure, diameter, shell thickness. We can calculate the different stresses. That is a circumference stress, then resultant stress, uh, longitudinal stress. And we can determine the factor of safety and predict the conclusion that whether design of our uh, unfired pressure vessel is safe or not. Thank you for watching.